Let's shift focus to Kenya now, where protests against President William Ruto show no signs of dying down. Kenya's capital city, Nairobi, continues to remain on edge. On Thursday, clashes erupted once again between the Kenyan police and protesters. The police hurled tear gas to break up the protesters who continued to gather, despite President Ruto's decision to withdraw the controversial finance bill. Military has also been patrolling the streets of Nairobi. There were demonstrations also in Mombasa, Kisumu, Migori and other major towns. Protesters say they still don't trust Ruto. We are here because we are demonstrating, because how this guy has taken everything away from us. Now we have nothing to live for, for sure. So right now we have nothing to lose but our fear. We'll do it until the president steps down. We'll do it until the president steps down. We want him to resign and all the MPs that supported the finance bill must go home and we don't want those MPs to make any public appearance. Those MPs must disappear from Kenya. We don't want to see them. Also, Ruto must resign. Ruto must resign and he goes home. The bill that proposed tax hikes had drawn fierce criticism from the start. But why did the government introduce the bill in the first place? It is because the Kenyan government wanted to raise $2.7 billion in additional taxes. This was to reduce the budget deficit and borrowing. Kenya's public debt stands at a staggering 68% of its GDP, higher than the 55% mark recommended by the World Bank and the IMF. The government said the measures were necessary to reduce national debt and essential to keeping the government running. Despite the bill being withdrawn, people are still angry with the government. They say the government's measures are punitive. They are demanding President Ruto to step down and the government to cut down on its extravagance instead of punishing people. They also are angry at the Ruto government for ignoring their concerns. So, will William Ruto uh, be caught between meeting their demands and the lenders urging the government to cut deficits and get more funding and a population burdened under a worsening cost of living crisis. Now, what were the proposed measures under this bill? It irked the Kenyan population. Let me break it down for you. It was meant to raise or introduce taxes or fees on a range of daily items and services. A 16% VAT on bread, cooking oil, diapers and sanitary pads, internet data, mobile phones, cameras and recording equipment, fuel, bank transfers, a yearly 2.5% tax on car ownership, and even taxes on cancer treatments. These were on the initial list. After peaceful protests by thousands, the government was forced to roll back on some of these taxes, including those on bread, cooking oil, car ownership and bank transfers. But many of the contentious ones remained, so the protests escalated. Now, the chaos continued even after President Ruto said he won't sign the bill into law. So what's next? Now the bill will return to Parliament with the recommendation that all of its clauses be deleted. The Ruto government says it will now work on austerity measures and would begin with cuts to the presidency's own budget. The government says that it will focus on operational expenditure, including travel, vehicle purchases and renovation. Now global ratings agencies say that after the withdrawal of the planned tax hikes, Kenya is unlikely to achieve its fiscal targets. So an end to problems for William Ruto and the people of Kenya are certainly not in sight. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.
Congratulations to the 2020 World Cup run by the Indians. We will cross to the West Indies.